The king of one country was holding a feast where he invited all his friends. Guests gathered in the great hall. But before the celebration began, one of the courtiers informed the king that all the drinks were poisoned. The king said nothing and offered everyone to raise a toast to the new millennium. All the guests got up and raised their glasses. That's when the king noticed the villain who had been trying to poison him and other guests. Who is it? The guy over there is holding an empty glass. He knows the drinks are poison, so he hasn't poured anything in his glass. Once, on a cold winter night, someone stole jewelry from a famous singer's house. The thief didn't manage to run far away because a police car was passing by. The burglar hid the bag with the jewelry in the snow and disappeared into the crowd. Detective Anderson managed to catch two suspects. Look at them and try to guess who robbed the singer. If you dig snow with your bare hands, they will turn red. This man has red fingers and palms. But that woman could dig snow wearing a pair of gloves, so she could be the thief too. But she wouldn't be able to run in such high heels. A university professor enters a lecture hall, where his colleague, an elderly teacher, is giving a lecture on quantum physics. He's drawing formulas on the board, and his students are using their laptops to take notes. The professor knows that one of these students is sleeping. He starts walking around the room, stopping behind each of them in turn. Who is dreaming right now? Almost all the students are writing the formulas down on their laptops. Except for that one. His screen is off. That's because he's fallen asleep. Detective Anderson is chasing a robber dressed in a tuxedo. Suddenly, the criminal runs inside a huge hall. All people there are formally dressed. Help Detective Anderson find the suspect among them. Catch that guy. He's sweating because he's been running. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office, finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office, but there's a fridge and cooler in the next room, behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with the magnetic lock had been locked. Mike wakes up in the back seat of a racing car. The engine is roaring, the wind is blowing in Mike's face. There's no one at the wheel, and a cliff is straight ahead. Michael's hands are tied. He jumps out of the car without hesitation and lands on the asphalt. Surprisingly, he doesn't get a single scratch. How is this possible? The car isn't moving, just its engine is running. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger, but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. 
So, how did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. While leaving her house, Sandy takes her sunglasses out of her bag and accidentally breaks them. Now she needs to buy new ones. Sandy calls a taxi and arrives at the street with fashionable boutiques. The best glasses in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best glasses in the world is written on the second boutique. The inscription on the third store is the coolest. Sandy heads there. What is written on the third store? The best glasses in this street. Johnny is going through his bills. $50 for electricity, $39 for water, $70 for a bag, $448 for a new phone, $52 for dinner at a restaurant, $589 for a computer, $637 for a room in an expensive hotel. He has received a $978 bonus at work, but he also needs to buy a new fridge for his mom, and it costs $798. John has to leave soon, but he wants to know how much money he'll need. How can he calculate it quickly? He should use the calculator app on his phone. The simplest answer is often the right one. Detective Anderson investigates the case of missing purebred puppies. He has a list of three suspects. He visits each of them. The first suspect is a young girl. She says she spent the previous day with her friends. And she's also allergic to dogs. The second suspect is an elderly man. He says he hasn't left the house for the last few days. The third one is a famous video blogger. She says she was making YouTube videos all day. Which of them is lying? The first girl. She says she's allergic to dogs, but there's a bowl and some dog food in her kitchen. Peter works as a top manager at a huge insurance company. Today, his boss ordered him to fire three employees. Peter doesn't want to get rid of someone just like that, so he comes up with a test. He invites all three candidates for dismissal and asks them to write down why they should stay in the company. The first employee writes that he's helped the company earn $100,000. The second guy reports that he's found 10 new clients, increasing the company's profit by $200,000. Using some illegal schemes, the third employee has earned $300,000 over the past quarter. Who should Peter fire and who should he keep? Actually, he got the order to fire three people, remember? The test was pointless. A train finally leaves the station. The conductor starts checking the tickets. Two passengers, Mickey and Anya, hand him two tickets for the same seat. There must be something wrong here, because only one passenger can buy a ticket for a particular seat. The first ticket belongs to Mickey Jones. The seat is 7B. Anya Roy is written on the second ticket. The seat is 7B. Who should sit in this place? Plane ticket, Mickey Jones' document says, and this is the train. The place belongs to Anya. Joe goes to the gym every day. He lifts heavy weights and works with the biggest barbells. He has achieved great results. One day, a skinny guy comes to the gym. He has never done sports in his life. He approaches the heaviest dumbbells and lifts them easily. Joe can't believe his eyes. He's been working for 10 years to begin lifting such weights. How did the newbie manage it? It seems impossible.
The new guy is actually a robot. There's a wire connecting him to a wall outlet over there, see? And at the far end of the hall, a man is holding some gadget. He must be controlling the robot. It's snowing! Richard is trying to walk fast, not to freeze. He's leading three sheep through a dense forest. Finally, they reach the river. There is a raft near the shore, but it can only transport one sheep and one person at a time. A wolf is sitting on the other side of the river. If Richard takes his sheep there one by one, the wolf will grab them. The man needs to be near his sheep at all times. But how can he do it? It's winter, and the river is frozen. So let's check scores. Zero to three points. You need more practice. But I'm sure you feel motivated now, so you'll be more attentive cracking riddles in the future. Four to seven points. Mm, Not your best result, but not the worst either. You know what to strive for. Eight to eleven points. Not bad. The main thing now is to sharpen your skills. Twelve to fifteen points. Congrats! You've got a high score so you can consider yourself a quick-witted person. Hey, let's check if you can make a good detective. How about a warm-up task? Look at the photo of these friends hanging out together. They are three couples. Each consists of a girl and a guy. What's your guess? Who dates who? Look, these two on the right are pretty comfortable with each other and don't really care about anyone else. So my bet is that they're a couple. Psychologists say that we tend to turn toward people we like most in a group. The dark-haired girl and the black-haired guy are turned toward one another, so they must be the second couple. And the redhead and the guy on the left mostly look at each other too, so it works too. What was your guess? That was just a warm-up. Now, let's get down to business. I have a couple of cases for you to crack. A young lady, Lessie, went missing. Her best friend, Colette, said that Lessie had been planning to run away with her mysterious boyfriend. He supposedly lived in some other country. Lessie even left this farewell note. What do you think about this case? If you think that the note is suspicious, you're right. The first letters of each line form the word SAVE. Maybe Lessie was forced to write it and left a hint. I think that the police should work more closely on this case. Ella is a PhD student working at a university. She just got a new motorbike she's been dreaming about since she was young. In the morning, she polished it for her evening bike ride, closed the garage, and went to work. In the evening, she opened the garage and found that her motorbike was gone. She questioned three neighbors. Micah said, When I went grocery shopping at noon, the motorbike was still there. Ina said that she'd left before sunrise and had just returned home. Sonia said that she hadn't paid any attention to Ella's house. She was worried about her job interview. So who stole the bike? Micah. He said that he had seen the bike in the garage, but it couldn't be true because the garage was closed. An anonymous note was sent to the police, reporting that one of the students of the local college was not a real person, but a creature from a parallel universe in disguise. There was also a picture of several young people, and the imposter was among them. Who seems suspicious to you? Look, there's a mirror in the back of the room reflecting every person. Except for this girl, she's not reflected in the mirror, so something must be off about her. A jewelry store manager started to notice that every month a pair of earrings went missing. The suspicion fell on the cashier. The first time it happened, she was forgiven. The second time, the sum was withdrawn from her salary. The third time, the manager fired her. But the theft happened for a fourth time. 
When it occurred once again, the manager decided to go through the security camera footage. Here are some of them, made in May, June, July, August, and September. Do you see anything suspicious? On each of these recordings, there's a man with a cast. If he really had his arm broken, it'd heal in a month or a couple of months max. But it's been five months, so the cast is obviously fake. And he's the thief. I think the cashier should file a wrongful termination suit, but I digress. Venus was expecting her delivery, but it was running late because of heavy rain. She had to go to work, so she asked her boyfriend, who had a day off, to get it from the post office for her. When Venus came back home, her boyfriend said that he had just been to the post office, but the package hadn't arrived yet. Venus understood that her boyfriend hadn't gone anywhere. How did she figure it out? It's been raining all day, but the spot under the car is dry, which means no one's used the vehicle during the day. Dr. Roberts, one of the best surgeons in the country, came to his insurance company and said that he had been robbed right in the street. The assistant asked if Dr. Roberts remembered any specific details about the robber. The surgeon said that he couldn't recollect anything because the robber had been fast. Plus, since Dr. Roberts had extremely poor eyesight, he hadn't seen him clearly. The assistant refused to proceed and said that Dr. Roberts was lying and hadn't been robbed. Why didn't he believe Dr. Roberts? Dr. Roberts is a surgeon. Surgeons usually have excellent eyesight. So why did a highly paid surgeon need the insurance money? Hmm. There was a grand ball organized in honor of Ms. Dell's birthday, and half of the town was invited. Suddenly, the lights in the entire building went off for a couple of minutes. When the lights came back on, Ms. Dell's beautiful diamond earrings were missing. The main suspect was her distant cousin, Sylvia. But the girl said that she had been in the bathroom fixing her makeup. She didn't even notice that the lights had gone out because she'd been busy. Who is lying, Ms. Dell or Sylvia? The lights went out in the entire building. If Sylvia had been fixing her makeup, she would have definitely noticed that something was wrong. Hey, it's dark in here! In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candies. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relham came back home after a long day at the club. Her three daughters had been staying at home. The woman asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd gone shopping for a new board game and then spent the day playing it with her friends. Elle said that she had been partying with her classmates in the pool. Ava said that she had been binge-watching TV shows all day and eating ice cream. Mrs. Relham could tell that one of her daughters lied. Who was it? It was Hannah. Look, the board game she bought is unpacked. She couldn't be playing it. Four friends were driving to New York City for the weekend. The music in the car was on and everyone was in a good mood, so the driver got distracted and got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started an investigation. He asked the guys who had been driving, but no one wanted to take the blame. Then the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who was driving? Look, there is a purse hanging on the driver's seat. It must belong to a girl. There's just one girl in the group, so she's likely to be the driver. Mrs. Miller came back home after work and asked what her daughters had been doing all day. They were all grounded and weren't allowed to leave the house or watch TV. Kaylee said that she had been doing housework and had just finished cooking pizza for dinner. Ellery said that she had been upstairs in her room reading. Lilith said that she'd spent the day cleaning her room. Who's lying? (music) 
It's Kaylee. She said that she had made this pizza herself. But why is there a pizza box in the garbage? She ordered the pizza and was probably doing something else instead. It was a cold fall day. Mr. Jones was at home drinking tea and reading his newspaper. He also peeked out of the window from time to time. There, four teens, Mark, Davin, Bexley, and Penny were having a picnic. Suddenly, a ball broke the window of his living room. The teens started to pack their things. They didn't want to confess who had done this. In the evening, Mr. Jones got a note, but inside, there was just a question mark. Do you know who broke the window? The question mark is a hint. It literally means question mark. So Mark must be the one who did it. Adele found her friend Oliver on the floor of his studio in the attic. She called the police. The officer who came asked the girl to tell him what had happened. Adele said that she had been walking past Oliver's house and noticed that the lights had been on. She came up to the window, peeked inside, and saw him on the floor. She called the police and ran into the house. The police didn't believe her. Do you? No, it doesn't sound right. The guy was in the attic. Adele couldn't possibly see him through the window, unless she was 20 feet tall. On Wednesday, a high school student, Layla, went missing. There are three suspects. Mrs. Adams, the director. Mrs. Smith, a school cook and Mr. Jones, a cleaning man. Mrs. Adams said that she had a lot of work and spent the whole day in her office, never leaving it. Mrs. Smith said that after the working day, she had to stay in the kitchen to do some cleaning before the weekend. Mr. Jones said that he'd left after classes to do some shopping. He only returned several hours later. Who is guilty? There's something suspicious about Mrs. Smith, the cook. It's Wednesday, so what weekend cleaning is she talking about? Alan was traveling from Madrid to Amsterdam. But when his train arrived at the station, he wasn't there. His friend reported his disappearance. The police found some traces just a couple of hundred miles away from Madrid. First, they saw Alan's footsteps. And a bit further away from there, his suitcase was found. Then they interrogated the man who was the last to see Alan. He said that Alan hadn't had a train ticket. So when he saw the conductor coming, he threw his suitcase and then jumped from the train himself. Do you believe this man? If it were true, the police would have first found the suitcase and then Alan's footsteps. But in this case, we can conclude that the guy didn't jump himself. He was pushed off the train. How rude.